everyone, uh, I'm Isaac from SGE. We are an online publisher that covers uh, startups and entrepreneurship in Singapore and Southeast Asia. So like uh, Xiaoting has really introduced the guests. Before we start on the, uh, this discussion on how to make uh, mentorship work for you, uh, let's have Irene first to share a little bit about herself and the work that she does. Hi. <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> my name is Irene Ang and I presume most of you know who I am. I'm so sorry I didn't wear my wig today. And yes, I was not poor dancing, sir. <laughs> uh, I, I actually run a couple of business in the entertainment industry. Uh, the most famous being uh, running into a stunt that, that hosted all the K-pop concerts in Singapore that were sell out. And the other one is uh, an artist management company called Fly Entertainment. We also do events. And I guess they asked me to come in because I started my company with $2,000. And then there was an ace. So, uh, yeah, it's still here, so maybe I have a little bit of things to share later on. I like knows my story. Um, Dr. Steven? Yeah, hi, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Steven Park. Uh, I've, I've always been, a, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur since, uh, since as young as I can remember. I think part, part, of, the, part of the appeal is really about uh, Building something from nothing, uh, and my entrepreneurial journey started uh, as young as uh, when I was uh, as young as uh, 19. Uh, also tried my hand at entertainment, didn't make it. Uh, but as I've said earlier, uh, you need to fail uh, to learn, and then you can succeed. I, I don't believe, and I've not met any entrepreneur to say that I've been successful right from day one. So I think I until today I'm still learning, and my hope is you know to also learn something from you, uh, for those new entrepreneurs out there. But I guess the biggest difference between uh, myself and, and you is that I've made more mistakes, and with those mistakes, uh, hopefully uh, there are some common threads and, and lessons that could be shared. Uh, so with that, I kind of uh, you know um, uh, conclude my short introduction and I'll uh, pass it on to the next uh, item. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Stephen. Uh, Virginia? Okay, uh, good, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Virginia. Uh, some of you may not know me. Some of you, you, you may know me from way, way back in 1995. Um, I started the first company right here in Singapore. Uh, it was a start a spin out from uh, a research lab. Uh, and that was 1995, way back when there wasn't much uh, venture capital. It was very difficult, there was no mentoring and so forth. Anyway, uh, through that journey, I exited and through a backdoor listing. Then I went to China for quite a few years, started a, uh, a series of companies in China. And um, I just came back to Singapore in 2007. I decided China was enough for me. Uh, uh, if you've been to China, you'll know what I mean. Anyway, so I came back in 2007, having run, a, I don't know, a series of companies, at least five or six in China. And um, then I decided to come back to Singapore and get my PhD uh, in innovation and entrepreneurship to combine with my practical experience. Hopefully I now have some frameworks. Um, so I just finished my PhD from NUS last year in Chongchu Jianghu. And so I'm back into the entrepreneurship scene um, because there's one thing I need to tell you guys, um, is once you become an entrepreneur, you really are not very employable after that. So, <laughs> it's, it, it's very difficult to go back to regular employment after you've tasted the, the, the excitement of being an entrepreneur and you realize actually you don't need to live with that steady income and that you, this freedom and the ability to create your, craft your own future is so exhilarating even through failures, that you can't go back to employment anymore. So um, I'm back in the scene, uh, not, no longer as an active entrepreneur, but active as a mentor. I am mentor at SMU at NUS. I teach entrepreneurship at INSEAD and at NUS. And I guess I just got recruited to be a spring ace uh, mentor. So, <laughs> which, and then I, by the way, I just got recruited to sit on this panel just this morning. So, it's a great surprise. <laughs> I'll just make it short. I'm Jerry from Express the Music. I was also one of the uh, first badges who got the uh, Yes Startup Grant. That was some years back. So, I was like you guys. And um, now, uh, 
we have, we have a few mentors, not only just one or two mentors, but we have quite a lot of mentors along the way for the past uh, two, three years. And um, in return, what we are doing right now is to mentor our uh, interns. So it's, it's a cycle, I would say. Um, having said that, I forgot to introduce uh, what we do. So what Express the Music do in, in, in a short brief is that we do audio branding. We are a crowdsourcing platform that does like jingle or even uh, corporate theme songs. So we crowdsource and now we have just uh, opened up a new subsidiary uh, just this year doing a background environmental music, doing a music psychology and music science. What type of audio can bring in uh, better sales or even uh, better uh, brand recall. So that's what we do in a nutshell. Thank you, Jerry. So Dr. Stephen, right? Um, an advice for the startups. There are a lot of successful people out there. How would a new entrepreneur choose a mentor? That's a very good question, which I, I don't really have a good answer for, but I'll try. I think um, the best way to describe that relationship is a lot like marriage. Um, if you look at uh, what what is involved in getting married or getting to a point of being married, I think first there's the dating game, and then there's the getting to know you game, uh, and then there's a the building of trust, uh, and then beside you know, determining what role they play, uh, what role or what contribution they will play and act in the household. So if you think along that line, uh, that partnership between mentor and mentee would be a bit like that. Uh, except, I think in this case, uh, of course we have to ask the question, what would be the interest or what would motivate a mentor uh, to want to carve out the time to spend with a mentee. And, and likewise, you know, mentees uh, don't just think, you've got to also be sensitive to the fact that uh, there is a reason why your mentor choose or chose you in the first place. So in that symbiotic relationship and in towards building uh, uh, that uh, uh, partnership, you have to think a lot along the lines of uh, what the other party can bring to the table. Is there sufficient trust on the table? Is there sufficient... Uh, 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 you know, chemistry uh, to, to kind of, you know, uh, take you through the hard times and then you will see a lot of hard times, just like any good uh, marriage, you will go through uh, challenges and these challenges will make that relationship uh, grow stronger. So I know if it's a long-winded way, then there's a lot more in my answer, but uh, you know, in a nutshell, that's how I feel. I would love to hear from the other panel members as well. Any thoughts? So, um, Virginia, you look like you had something to say. You lift up your mic a bit when Dr. Stephen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have something to say. Uh, I think that um, being a mentee myself for several years, um, I can share about being a mentee. Um, do not expect your mentors to be God. They cannot, and it, neither are they daily copper field, so they don't make things happen for you. Um, I think what irks a mentor most or disappoints a mentor most is when uh, you keep, that means you don't change yourself and you expect people around you to change. For example, my partner is this, 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 or you know, the government is this, 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 and I, I particularly hate it when people do that because I feel that you're wasting my time. If I keep telling you, giving you advice and you're not taking those advice and trying them out, I have a lot of people that I would like to spend time with who are willing to learn. So one thing I learned as a, a mentee that, because I have a mentee, spiritual mentee, business mentee, financial mentee, sorry, mentors, and it's not one mentor fit all. Not one mentor is going to fit every need you need. It's like a teacher. You go to school, you take science, biology, history, history and physics. So it's in a same nutshell, you have to find a different mentor. It's, it, it's, it's like ask, asking a, a surgeon uh, how to repair a car. You can, just because the guy's a successful businessman doesn't mean that he's a successful for, for example, he's a good salesperson, you know? Uh, most of them are, but, um, and also leadership skills and, and, and technology skills and, and administrative skills, everyone has different skill sets. What I do as a mentee when I was young, and I just go to the best of. So you choose and the people around you that you know, ask around, and it's like, hey, you know, I, 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 I really can't understand this PNL, this bottom line thing, what is it? Go to people and ask them, oh, um, I, I saw this ad and, and it's really great. Find out who did the ad or who did the marketing campaign. And I wrote into Air Asia because I thought, wow, this company can have one million dollar, uh, one million fans on Facebook. I tried to find out who was behind it, and I found out she's a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. So I tried to be there when she's there, and I introduced myself, and I said, hey, I was really impressed with how you can 
do your, her name was Kathleen, and she is a Singaporean. She has only discovered Stephanie's son. And, and she said, oh, um, actually, it's because the economy crisis. Uh, so Tony Fernandez asked me to cut the budget from 10 million to 1 million. So I got only 1 million to do. So I, for the whole year, so I have to do a free media. And so, of course, she, she, she said she, she sort, sort of uh, shoot her own food because the next day Tony said, Hey, Kathleen, since you can do with one million, the one million will be this year's budget too. So we make nine million for the people. And so I, I, I think you just have to be there with the people that you want to, and somehow the universe will make, you happen, uh, make it happen that you're there. Yeah, I think, uh, can I just add on to yeah. that?